Council on Aging, seeing on him senior services, your board of directors meeting. Uh, our first order of business is the public session. I believe we have someone, Minor Harrison, who would like to speak to us. Can I remain seated? <laughs> yeah, and this is being videotaped and recorded. Okay. No, I just meant you could hear me. That's fine. Well, as you know, we're saying goodbye to our wonderful leader over here, uh, Patty, and we have a committee that's uh, supposed to help the mayor with figuring out who would be the best person for the head of the senior center. So um, it's not like I have a lot to say, but I have some questions, and I hope it who's, who's uh, Butler. I'm sorry, I don't know your first name, Jenny. Oh, Jerry. Yeah. Jerry. 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 Here, Jerry. Yeah. There's two folks from this committee that I'm sure you all know this, but who, who are going to be part of that um, interviewing process. I think one of the things in my hearing about what's going on in the retirement and, and the change and so on that concerned me was I feel that um, the public is not as well known, I say seniors in public, as it's not so well understood as to how many very independent things the senior centers does that aren't connected to the city. And I'll be specific. And, and that is, for example, I don't really know if the folks who applied for this job or in the process, I think it's really important that they get a really good sense of what the person in charge really needs to do, which is a whole lot of different things. I mean, you've got to have a lot of different abilities to do them. For example, the biggest one, I think, the biggest one, raising funds. I mean, there's an enormous job that I think our people here do, with everyone's help, of course, but the, to understand how much of the budget is involved with that and what would happen if it isn't carry out professionally and properly. That's just a really big topic, I think. And trying to find out in these interviews what these people have really done and what they really, really do or don't understand in the process. And so uh, there's plenty of other things to say about what happens here and who's in charge and how it works. But I feel like it'd be really important if you all could help the two people who are going to this, you know, complicated process of interviewing people in the next month, basically, it seems to me, and trying to get the best sense you can. I'm saying to the folks on the committee, but I'm saying we're the ones who are going to have this person. We'll probably have them for quite a while, whoever it is. So I just think it's really important that a lot of the specifics about how things work here gets relayed in the committee and gets some serious feedback with people that they decide to interview in the process. Because it's not going to change easily after the person's here, right? And it'd be great if a person could stay for a longer time. But I just feel it's super important that those folks really, really concentrate on getting a sense of how these folks can do. Are, are you on the committee, ma'am? No, no, no. No, you're not. You two no, I didn't know if you were on the committee in any no, aspect. No. Okay. And I think because of the confidentiality and a lot of other little things like that, we're not going to hear a whole lot back. When I say we, I mean you all, you yeah. know, certainly not the public, won't hear a lot back in the process. I don't even know, and maybe after I talk, Bob wants to say, maybe he knows. I don't even know whether at a certain point the press or whoever it is is able to tell who was really interviewed, you know? I'd like to know. I think other people would like to know. Can't know ahead of time, I'm just saying, after it happens or in the process of happening. So I don't think you all will have another meeting before person's chosen. This is the time. This is the time for you all to try to help them and us help 
the senior center get someone with the most talent and ability and ambition to really work on things the way Patty has. Well, well Jerry, has, have you been notified at all of any upcoming meetings since you are one of our reps? Uh, we, yes, but we have a confidentiality that we're not revealing anything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you have at least you've been notified because the letter was sent and we were even unsure if the letter was going yeah. to be acknowledged. But we didn't get a chance to speak. You were probably going to mention something about it. Yeah. I mean, we let the public speak first. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, is that... Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. We appreciate your comments. Okay, we'll move on to the staff report. Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Dillman, social worker. Um, I'm going to report on a few things. Uh, the first, I'm going to report on the growth of Northampton. Um, it's the Northampton Senior Farm Share Program. Um, we've had it for a uh, few years now, four years, I believe. Um, this year, um, I can explain what it is first. Um, they, the Farm Share Program offers affordable farm shares to low-income senior citizens of the city of Northampton during 10 weeks of the summer. Participants receive a one-person weekly share of fresh harvest, harvested vegetables with a total value of over $100 for just $10 fee. Um, so it comes out to be about a dollar a week. The vegetables are grown at Crimson and Clover Farm in Florence, and the shares will be available for pickup here on Tuesdays from 2 to 3 um, at the Northampton Senior Center starting in July, July 5th to September 6th. So we have the applications, and um, this year we've gone up. We have 70 shares um, available. So 70 seniors or 70 families will be able to have a, a senior farm share. We had 55 shares last year. Um, it's gone up um, through Grow Food Northampton, um, has gotten a um, grant through Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare Foundation, which is helping pay for the extra shares so that's very nice um, right now we've I've had that we've had the applications out since May and um, we have 47 completed applications in so um, we're still looking for more people we've I've done we've done a lot of different outreach today um, we had the brown bag program and so we have put applications in 144 bags that went out to people, seniors, mostly seniors, some disabled. But the program is only available to seniors 60 and older um, for the senior farm share. And um, they have to live within Northampton and they have to either be receiving um, another program like food, another food assistance program, fuel assistance on that line or have an income, um, live alone and their income is below 22980 or combined income with a spouse or partner below $31,020. Um, so this is the application. If anyone wants to look at it, I'll leave it and pass it around. And uh, <clears throat> so we are still, still have some shares available, but we're, we're happy that it's grown. And once it gets here on Tuesdays, we'll be doing it Tuesdays, every Tuesday for 10 weeks. Um, we have volunteers that will come in. The farm brings the vegetables straight from the farm that morning, drops them off in big buckets for us, and our volunteers will put them together in the bags. We, again, we'll be using um, the farm uh, reusable bags, so we're we're staying on them, not throwing away no plastic bags, no Are these paper vegetables bags. Clean? They're not. They're not clean. They come right from the farm. Um, so they're, you know, they're not filled with dirt, but they, they need to be washed when the people get them home. And with 70 shares, we don't, we don't take the time to really wash them. But it's a, it's a great program, and it's really helped people eat healthier. So um, we have the deadline is the 17th um, of this month for applications. We did extend it one time already. The, original application deadline was going to be the third june 3rd but because um we just weren't for some reason people just weren't signing up but it's really coming in steadily now so i'm sure we'll fill the 70 slots so and on um, anyone questions about want to hold questions till later yeah. okay um our low vision group that meets once a month 
Um, we have about 14 participants that come regularly now, every month. And we've changed the meal to, our meal is now being provided by Extended Care at Amherst. So they are, they'll bring us, and they've been bringing us for um, two months now. This, we've just done two months of our nice hot meal that they, they provide, so that's worked out very nicely. And they're very happy with that. Um, and I'm in the process of um, medic working out a Medicare open enrollment fair. So, um, because we're really busy during open Medicare open enrollment, which is October 15th through December 7th, where uh, Medicare beneficiaries can change their, make changes to their plan if they like. So I'm in the process of um, working out a date with Patty for um, a Medicare open enrollment fair, and we'll be inviting um, different Advantage plans from the area that people can come in and talk to about what's available, you know, things like that. So I think that will be really helpful. And that will hopefully be sometime in October, but we'll, we'll let you know when the date will be. And that's really all I have. Does anyone have any questions for Michelle on any of this? I do. Um, if the um, the food share, the share of uh, farm share, farm share. Yes. Now that's income eligible. Seniors, it is. Right? And what happens if you don't get seventy, or you, or you think you will? But what happens if you don't? Do you change that, or are you? you we'll, we'll just we'll just use less shares. But I I believe we'll be able to get seventy. 70 shares. People will, you know, we really put out the word. We've given, I've given applications to all the house and gone over and, and spoke to um, Highland Valley Elder Services, the meal program. We've left, I've left applications over there, all the different housing agencies. And now on um, there, it's also been in, um, not in the, the paper at this time, but it's been on our calendar, new signs up. So we really, really are promoting it. Anything else? I'm just going to add that the um, farmer market coupons, people start calling like in April. Yes. For those, <laughs> but they aren't available until the summer. And we yeah. don't, we have to wait till we get them. Yeah. When we so get those April. from Highland Valley. It's a different program. Yeah. They so, usually come about in July. Probably with that. Yeah. So I'll probably probably put up a sign up front letting the, letting the reception know what the difference is. Because it does, as soon as I see farm, farm share, they think it's farm market yeah. coupon. Yeah. So I'll just leave an application and the sign as you pass around if you want to take a look at it. Thank you very much, You're John. Welcome. Uh, moving on to finances, the Y16 budget. Yeah, we should have a copy of the. Um, Yes, an OM account. So it's um, getting to the end of the fiscal year. June 30th is the last day. So um, in personal services, funds will be transferred um, to pay for our portion of <clears throat> the um, amount we owe the city for our personnel. So right now, and today is another pay period. So um, right now, $53,618.25. That's what we owe the city for our, our portion of the, the uh, salary budget. Um, so that, that happens. And then in our OM account, meaning whatever it is that we need to purchase for the ongoing um, operation of the building, um, there's $222.45 left. So. Um, We'll, we'll manage to that point, so that's, that's, there won't be anything left in that. So um, again, at the end of usually May, June, we start transferring funds to cover our um, portion of what we owe the city for our budget. And again, the, that's done through um, fees, uh, rentals, um, fitness center membership, the book sale, the mini sale, the the coffee shop, the gift shop, any of the fundraisers we do, that's how we pay for our portion of um, what the city budget mm -hmm. is that we need to supplement. Any questions on that? Mm -hmm. OK. 
Okay. Uh, we'll move on to the FY17 budget. Yep. So on um, City Council, I believe it's gone to City, the budget, the City budget has gone to City Council, but the, it has not been, um, the second reading has not happened yet. So um, I did not have to appear before the City Council um, to talk about our budget. So um, uh, our budget did go down uh, in terms of um, what the new director will be paid. So that, that was reduced. But everything else in the budget that I submitted um, is still standing. So this is a level <coughs> level budget. But we were told to do a level services level. budget, so, and that's what we did. Any questions on that? Okay, move on to the director's report. So my director's report is sort of like my final report, um, a little different than what I've done in the past. Um, and these, everybody should have a sheet that I put together um, that says dear board members. What I did was I put together some sort of parting thoughts that I think um, you know, a lot of this isn't new, but I put it in a concise form because I think these are considerations and conversations that should happen um, with the board, with um, hopefully the new director, with staff, um, if they're subgroups, but some of the things that I thought um, are important and I guess always looking at what more can happen with the senior center to keep it moving forward, to make it a more, I don't want to say to make it better, it's to enhance what, what is part of here. And again, I realize that you know I'm gone and this can mean nothing, but I, I think I have an obligation to bring it forward and um, share this with you. And again, I'm gonna say it isn't, a lot of this isn't new. It's some of you who have been here for a long time on the board. Um, no. um, have heard this, but so here we go. Um, so one of the things that I have found to be a, a major issue in Northampton um, for seniors is housing. Mm -hmm. We have low income housing, um, and I'm gonna slash that with public housing, and we have high end housing. Um, you know, whether it's something for um, seniors like at Bear Hill, or it's some um, apartments that you pay $1,200 a month for. So I think that a lot of seniors are kind of edged out of being able to rent something that is um, like an apartment. They don't need a house, they need something that provides them some space. Again, it's not um, housing authority property and it isn't high end. Um, we, we, there's a gap in between, we don't have that in Northampton. Many cities and towns do, they provide that type of housing. And um, I think it's something that Northampton um, should really start looking at. Mm -hmm. um, it, again, I know in previous conversations with contractors, it's like finding the land, finding the um, financing, and I don't think there's gonna be any problem filling it because it is a real need for many, many, many seniors to have an apartment or um, it can either be rental, I'm not even saying that it's a condo where people would buy it. Um, that it's a safe environment, it has um, the amenities that are needed, um, but it's like having a new home and this is, this is where I'm gonna be living. Um, and I think one of the key things is as well that, that it's um, in locations that, you know, again, another part of this is transportation, a lot of it's so intertwined that, you know, it's not out, out, way out at the edge of, uh, now you can get into uh, Southampton or uh, East Hampton, or, you know, that it needs to be kind of centralized. I don't think we have a lot of property available closer to downtown, but, you know, downtown living um, can be um, quite useful because it's within range with stores and um, offices for, you know, assistance with medical appointments. Um, you know, things are being built, but it isn't necessarily what people um, who are seniors can afford. So, I, what I'm saying is that there needs to be housing that you have an apartment, it's uh, operated through, um, in our case it would be our city, 
um, you can live comfortably and um, sometimes I'm just concerned what it really means when somebody says it's affordable because I, I look at that number and say I, I'm not sure there's many people that I work with um, on a daily basis that can afford that. So housing is one of the things and it probably is something that I will be working with um, with um, groups out there who are trying to find um, a good means of how this can get going in Northampton. But it, I think it's a one of the major considerations. You know that it's just for people 16 and older. It's not for anybody else. You know. Um, can you get federal funds for that? Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah. And you yeah, don't you have to take building. everybody? Yeah. yeah. I thought you only said yeah, there's take there's disabled there's people. I mean, I mean, I thought in that elderly housing. Okay, so that's, mm -hmm. that's a whole different yeah. type of yeah. housing. Yeah. That's so how we're talking you're talking more about contractors. Yeah. yeah. What are some towns, you said other cities and towns, would you name a couple that are like, give us an idea? Well, Southampton has housing. Mm -hmm. um, that's not very old, that is specific for mm -hmm. uh, seniors. Um, gosh, there's so many of them. Yeah. Run by the city? Run, in Southampton, it would be run by the town. Town, yeah. Is there any um, possibility, I mean, I know in my neighborhood that, it's, uh, that there's gonna be an apartment building for older people, yep. but it sounds like out of reach. And is there any way with the new housing that, I mean, any kind of, group housing that goes on in the city, just like that place off of um, Phillips Place, or even the new one on, on, uh, on uh, Pleasant Street, that there isn't a block, an ample block of buildings that set aside for people. I also said, uh, it was I reading the reports originally in the Pleasant Street project, yeah. some affordable housing yeah. in there, but what but, they mean by affordable housing. Well, that's, I mean, that's like, I mean, like Hospital Hills, I mean, I'm like, oh, oh, I'm oh, yeah. there for real so I, I think that there's, it's, it's on how it's developed and, and you know the purpose of it being constructed is to to make it on um, just and again I'm not going to use the word for it I'm going to use the word a reasonably priced living opportunity that's safe and um, is for persons who are 60 and older and that people can age in place at the um, and this is not uh, uh, subsidized as a housing value. It, yes, it would be houses. under, yes, that's correct. That, that's what I was going to ask you, Patty. You're looking for um, non-government funded, you know, like people, because once you get the government involved, then you, you, gotta take you can't everybody. decide that it's just for seniors. Or, so is that what you're saying, the gap privately, is that? Privately developed. Right. Yeah. Privately, privately, developed, privately developed, not publicly developed. But yeah. not like, like affordable, meaning $1,200 a like month. Like Michael's house? something like that. I mean, sometimes they say affordable is very high rent, right? yeah. but that's not affordable to seniors. We need something between, between, the, between, between the, the subsidized the housing in, in, say, the housing authority mm -hmm. and these regular rents, which I think probably eleven, twelve hundred dollars for a one bedroom apartment is probably fairly normal for decent housing in this town. So how does Southampton, South Southampton as a governmental entity run this housing? doesn't have income guidelines. It probably does have income guidelines. Oh. But you're talking about a different model. I'm talking, if it, if I, there's, there are many models out there. Um, so what I'm suggesting is, and it's not a new type of um, situation for people. <coughs> and again, we have, we have a low cost here and a high cost here. You know, where is it in between? That I think is what Northampton lacks. Um, and so I think also that there's a lot of ways to investigate because this isn't an easy, you know, couple. Uh, there's not like one answer to this whole thing. And uh, as you mentioned, there are, you know, which model? There are different models, but I think we're looking at that. Um, that here, here's an environment you can move into, and it's reasonably priced, it's safe, and um, excessive, excessive and aging in place, and that it's, um, I'm going to say, unavailable. You know, I don't think you can build 500 units. Um, 
So I mean, I do know actually there's, there's, um, there's, there's a, a lot of other things running through my head about right. housing well, first. Well, would be, it would be, I'm sorry, it would be private development on a space like where the rehabilitation place is on the bridge road. You know, that was just, 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 well, we've been talking to this guy. That's been asking for everything. He wants, he wants a four million dollars for his case. Okay, yeah. So, and that's where the hold up is, because right. there's a bunch of developers that have gotten together to find the nursing homes. Just yeah. for that. And so, 55 yeah. private, you know, these blah, 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 blah. The, to attain it is just ridiculous. Um, and then the problem is that the units have to be so expensive. Exactly. You don't need that, all that extra. Um, all that stuff. People well, need some amenities. But, but at any rate, just, just, just to attain the property. The whole idea of the town should be it? providing amenities. It's, it's a group it? out of, I believe it's out of Boston. But. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it used to be here of last year. Four million? Oh. 4.3 was the last number. 4.3 was the last number. That's why they haven't that sold it. Well, that's why. It's yeah. not worth it. I mean. mm -hmm. In having talked to some developers uh, a few years ago, the, the big problem is being able to purchase the land and do the construction and then make it right. so that people can afford yeah. to be in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And that's... Mm -hmm. So you need, you know, you need. It needs to be somebody who, on, um, you know, the goal isn't to make money; it's yeah, to exactly. provide what is necessary, and it's kind of the right thing to do. Can there be any government uh, assistance in the purchasing of land and the building of it to assist the contractor into keeping those costs down without without yeah, becoming a problem? Yeah, then you need to follow right. the rules. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whenever you take money from the government, government. Yeah. 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 But you know, a lot of times there's. Um, funds available for site development, mm -hmm. for land purchase. And I, I'm not going to say oh, it comes from the Department of um, Urban Development. I, you know, I, I, I just know a bunch of things that it needs mm -hmm. to get um, put together. And I think it's, you know, it's it's probably time that yeah. it, it really it's occurs. It's starting with task force. Yeah. I think that's a good job for your future. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you have the money to do that. Fund it. <laughs> <laughs> well, part of the issue too is affordable affordable housing is between you know two hundred to three hundred thousand, and there are affordable houses in Manhattan, quote unquote. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's yeah. lots of houses between two hundred thousand. Yeah. What yeah. shape they're in, I'm not going to comment. Right. But there's a lot of houses out there, yeah. so technically we fall within mm -hmm. the guidelines that we need to for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. We have as much as we, you know, we fall in that. But they're not accessible. I mean, they're not convenient. And the tax yeah. are too high. Yeah. They require driving. Yeah, way out. And the tax okay. Too high. okay, so that's the subject that okay. the conversation to be continued. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, okay, it's imperative that we have a full, full that you all have a full fledged transportation mm -hmm. program. And, you know, we're currently um, looking at, well, we raised money for one um, man. But I think that transportation is a major issue, again, for seniors. And um, the transportation program here, although that can change with the new director, was to bring people to and from the senior center to start. But a real transportation should be where <clears throat> it's available during the day, it's available in the evening, and of course there's some cutoff time, as well as um, on weekends. That's, that's what people need um, who are seniors. Many, many seniors do not drive, or they may not, uh, they may drive, but now because of a, 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 a new uh, disability or they're in rehab, they would need um, additional transportation. So, you know, just picture yourself not having your vehicle, and what do you do next? Um, PBTA, yes, is our public uh, transportation. Um, that serves a lot of needs but it isn't necessarily at the time people need it, nor are there policies or way that it's um, directed for people to sign up for it. Um, so transportation would be another need um, beyond what I was striving for um, here at the senior center. There's a lot of seniors who would not drive at night, although they would drive during the day. Yeah, that's but because of vision problems, they yeah. don't feel comfortable yeah. at night. Yeah. And so at evenings would be very yeah. And you know, it would it would you know, two vans, three, four vans. You know, the more you have, and again, you need drivers. Are they paid? Are they um, volunteers? Are they uh, you know, what? How's your dispatch going to work? Because really, everything in here, it's 
you know, there's ways to figure it out, but there are additional resources that are needed, and that usually means um, funding and um, staffing. So I guess maybe this is like my parting wish list for, <laughs> for all of you. Um, Northampton Senior Services staff spends an enormous amount of time fundraising. And the emphasis of staff should be on direct services to seniors rather than supplementing the department budget. Is that unique to Northampton? It isn't. Yeah. Every, every senior center has to raise money in order to, for it to run. It doesn't get enough from the town that it's in. I, I can't speak for 348 <laughs> um, councils on aging senior centers. Many, and when I say many, it's the larger portion have to raise money um, you know and again you could say well you know you don't raise any money then I'll tell you we won't have certain positions here because we supplement with um, all those ways that I told you we come up with revenue um, to supplement salaries or even services and services yeah so um, you know again the staff here has has been very generous with their time their creativity their energy to really keep fundraising going some of the fundraising is easier than others, like putting the books out there. You know, we can make between seven and eight thousand dollars on that book sale. But that's fairly easy. But then, when you have something like you know a spaghetti dinner or um, shred day, you know that takes more energy, and that actually is time away from what you um, normally have to uh, do for your ongoing activities. I, I think in in um, our profession, that's how it is. You know, you have to raise. Money. But if you don't want extra stuff, then you're not gonna you're not gonna fundraise. But a lot of folks don't know that we have to raise the right. money. You know, they think everything is coming from the city, and right. they're wondering why they have to pay for certain things. Exactly. I've had that comment many times. Exactly. And I enlighten them as to why they have to pay. <laughs> and uh, they just look at you like the city doesn't just pay for everything. Right. Right. Well, they do in Williamsburg. Oh, well, we there's hardly any programs in a, in a one room senior center. Right. So, of course, they pay for everything. Yeah. And she still writes grants and does fundraising. Too, well, of course, she's it looking is. For more money. Yeah. Every senior center has yeah. it. Of course. So, Barbara, that is like a message we've been trying to get out forever. And some people don't even think we're a city department. They think right. we're just something right. else. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like, I try right. to explain it to somebody that'll say something to me. And I'll say, look, you cannot run a senior center with what you're getting from the city. Mm -hmm. If you want programs, you're going to have to pay for them because $10 a month for the fitness center or whatever classes you take. I take a clothing class, which is 20 bucks a session. Um, you just can't do it with, you know, air. Mm -hmm. You can't pull it out of the air. I mean, there are a number of senior centers, <coughs> excuse me, who don't charge for anything. And, you know, there'd be mutiny if they ever did try to ch charge something. So I think it's, you know, it's how you... Maybe they get more from the so, Yeah, that, that is true. Some um, departments, senior center departments, uh, get, get, get what they get. So it's up to the city. Yeah. And I think Mayor Higgins explained to you that the state does not mandate that we have a council on aging, so therefore if it's not mandated, they don't have to support it. Totally. They mandate a DPW, so you have to support it. They mandate schools, you have to support them. They don't mandate the council on aging. Since they don't mandate it, they dodge out. But when councils on aging began, the city, like many cities and towns, signed on to that they would have a council on aging. So, um, you know, that was a something the city chose to do. We'll be back. Uh, one of the um, programs that should happen here is the lunchtime meal. As some of you know, we used to have uh, a food program operated two different ways. Neither one was successful. Um, we do have Walter Salvo next door, who is the nutritional meal site. Um, and by our lease on this property with the housing authority, we cannot be a nutrition site. Um, and I'm not sure that if Highland Valley said, oh, you can have it, that this, that you would all want it. Because you need the funding and um, 
It's a lot of work. I mean, being on the Highland Valley Board. Yeah, board. and you'd have to get volunteer. I, I wouldn't recommend that, but you could have um, some kind of a, a meal site here, but it would have to be a dedicated food service staff um, because the two ways that we tried to run it, it was um, difficult um, without a, a person in there. And having a mealtime uh, lunch program, people would have a reason to come to a program, have lunch, and stay for another program. But it also provides people the opportunity to get out of their their living Social. environment and to socialize and. You know, maybe they're having problems with um, their landlord and they can talk to the social worker or, oh my goodness, look at I could, um, you know, buy a cup of coffee and bring it home and have it because I don't make coffee. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons to bring people into the building. Um, and keep in mind, too, the um, soup kitchen will be defunct down at St. John Candius when, when that building goes through that transfer and stuff. So that, that's going to stop. Yeah, and usually when other programs end, then you become, um, uh, you know, you're the one that needs to start figuring out for, for people. You know, when some agency stops, it, it, it comes on to you. Um, uh, we've talked about this, and we, we do this a little bit, um, at least once a week, having evening programs. But there, because there are so many people who work still and are unable to come during their regular hours that the building and up from before I even started this job that's what I always said that you know the senior center um, should be open evenings and weekends uh, to accommodate those um, persons who are unable to get here during the working day uh, and again what does that mean it means additional staffing and operational costs so um, but I think that there needs to be more consideration for that uh, group of seniors. Um, revenues generated from many sources, some of which I had mentioned before, but um, there's a lot of money that comes into the senior center based on the classes, programs, whatever cost centers we have, PBTA, all of that. And so there's a lot of turnover of um, money. And currently, the department secretary is the person who does that. And what that means is that person's working more on finances than really the other responsibilities of the department secretary. So a suggestion would be, um, or a view of the um, way the staff is set up is that there'd be an accounts clerk or a bookkeeper and still have a department secretary. And again, what does that mean? It means, you know, looking at additional revenue to fund that, that um, position. So lastly, senior services is an amazing department and each day with the staff involvement is only, I'm sorry, it should be, it only becomes more enhanced. It's a blessing to have such a vibrant senior center that can be enjoyed and used, utilized by so many. So that's, that's my report. Any questions? <laughs> wow. Good report. Okay, I'd like to take this moment to say that, uh, Patty, we, I think as I speak for the board, to say that we're very happy to have been working with you all these years. And we've had fun and enjoyment. And we wish you a lot of luck in your endeavors from here on in. And uh, we will try to get you in here to volunteer once. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be calling, getting a call from Heather. We'll give you the first month at least. Oh, we know where you live. live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I've enjoyed all my time working in the city, I mean, prior to this, excuse me, <clears throat> working in the registrar's office. So I'm sort of a lifer with this, this city and um, have enjoyed it. There's been a lot of challenges and I think um, a lot of opportunity to expand both in the registrar's and at the Council on Aging. Um, and again, you know, being dedicated to the city and to the people I work with. Great staff, great volunteers, great board, a lot of great seniors. So, I mean, I'll still see a lot of people because I live in Northampton. And yeah. I'm out and about, and yes. you just can't get away. <laughs> so, thank you. I've enjoyed working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to building and environment. We do have a volunteer to do the gardening. Um, 
Patricia Dotman. Um, Heather was able to get her as a volunteer to be in the garden mm -hmm. uh, side, so we're thrilled with that. Um, and some of the things that I have on under old business, I could cover under uh, building and grounds because it has to do with the building. Mm -hmm. um, so the sign out front, um, Keith Brick came in. Um, he's, uh, he may have already staked it out and the uh, city electrician needs to come to wire it, but that sign will be in before I leave because it's like I want that sign in before I come in. <laughs> so that, it, and I, it'll be wonderful to see that because people will identify what the building is. And then you noticed um, already the signs in the back. Yes. Um, so there are signs that will be inside above each room that tells what that room is. So it's a, it's a bigger lettering. So it says coffee shop. Um, gift shop and um, so they're just going to be more identifiable and he will right. get those in and ready um, and then you notice although this is still the building but it's inside now um, the two uh, wagons out there the two carts that you know took a while to get but um, those came from the Holyoke Mall mm -hmm. and as of yesterday uh, Mary and Bob and Bill Lemire our handyman uh, we and, and other staff got it situated so now the rows of books are gone and now we just have the books on one and the merchandise for the mini sale on another one so it looks a little cleaner out there and more organized <clears throat> those will be painted and also there's going to be signs put on them that say books and then also that it's Mary's mini sale table Mary's mini sale we'll have to get rid of that word table um, so you know it's got a cleaner look out there now um, and otherwise, I think, you know, the, I have some work orders that, uh, I think I have five work orders for central services, some of the cracked tiles and cracked cement on the floor, mm -hmm. um, a partition that needs to be um, put in the games room. The partition in the great room is still um, broken. And I think that's everything. We had an outlet that wasn't working in the fitness center, which I believe is fixed. Do we pay for that? No, that comes out of central services. Um, the first time the partition did break, we paid for half of the repair, and central services paid for half of the repair. So, but I need to really follow up on that because the election's coming up, and that room gets divided in half because we have <coughs> excuse me, two precincts on one side and two on the other side. Um, and you know, like today for brown bag, we usually divide the room. People wait on one side, and they put all the bags together on the other side, and. You know, um, I had Bob put in chairs like to make a divider. So, you know, you just kind of accommodate what you can do. So, so that's it for buildings and ground. Any questions on that? Okay. We're moving on to old business. We have taken care of the first three. Oh, the um, the mini bus. The mini bus. The, yeah. Um, so, those uh, were uh, ready to be ordered, and right now it's in the mayor's office. I mean, it's weird. Yeah. So I don't think the vans are going to be here before I leave. No, I but, um, so. you know, again, capital improvements is going to pay for one, and um, we raised the money for the other wow. one. So um, we'll see what the mayor's office is going to do with the, the vans. I hope uh, that's a priority. <clears throat> I understand no, that uh, when the order, it's still going to take four or five months to yeah, get Yeah, it's going to take, um, well, actually, five to six months five is what six. I was told. Mm -hmm. So, But, you know, it, it hasn't gotten past that now. Yeah. Um, so, actually, we, you know, are having, Heather has organized a birthday party for those 80 and older, and some people right. don't have transportation. So, what we were going to do and will do is to buy PBTA tickets to give to them so that they can take PBTA to get here. So that's, that's what we have as an alternative right now. But you know, we, we do get calls constantly about um, transportation, mm -hmm. you know, like, so. Is there, a, is there a way to get a bus pass, that we can sell bus passes to these people? Um, so that we get a discount and make a little money on them and sell them to seniors and they punch? I mean, yeah, I think that's available. Um, we, we sell the van tickets and we used to when we were in the other building <clears throat> we sold the bus passes and those are um, both on sale at the, the uh, city clerk's office and if people have a big Y card they can get a bus pass and a discount but they're there we can't we can't gain anything from selling PBTA 
So it's a courtesy. We do it as a courtesy. Um, and you know, a lot of people buy the, the end tickets mm -hmm. from us. So, but as an alternative, at least for this one program, um, this birthday party for 80 and older, um, it's giving them the van tickets to get a ride down. Is it 80 or 90? 90. 90. Oh, it's 90. 90. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Okay, so you're looking forward to 90 year old people <laughs> who are. <laughs> well, they have to take the bus. No, 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 the van, the PBTA. Cheerlifting. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you have to have a special license to drive it? There are many buses now. No. Oh. Not that I volunteer. You want to race one down the <laughs> King Street or something? We may hold you to that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll move on to Highland Valley Auto Services Report. Catherine? Oh. Um, yeah, there was a meeting this Monday. And um, it, it's sort of like it, it, a lot of the programs that they fund, funded or are funding through um, the Title III grant are, are in motion, so <coughs> they're coming along. And uh, oh, there's a lot, again, I think I mentioned it, a lot of talk about fundraising, you know, what they can do, and et cetera. So there's a big push you know, for board participation in this. And, um, and you know, I guess they're doing really well in terms of their budget, you know, okay. trying to figure out. Alan and they have a, um, she's not that new, but um, a book, you know, uh, accounts person who's really great. But, uh, just continue. Mm -hmm. Keep control of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any uh, comments or questions? And, yeah, I just want to say also that, um, uh, you know, a lot of you interact with the staff, but this staff here is tremendous um, and they work well together. <clears throat> You know, everybody jumps in when something needs to get accomplished. We all have our own responsibilities, but everybody works together for the purpose of uh, supporting what needs to get done, which in the end supports what um, seniors need um, in their their lives. Um, and I do want to say thank you to um, Heather, because Heather's been serving as the interim assistant director as well as the program uh, direct coordinator which, you know, that there's a lot of time that takes just to focus on one job or the other, but it's a mixture. I mean, a lot of the staff have chosen to jump in and help uh, with many of the responsibilities that are kind of left vacant, uh, but Heather has really stepped up to the plate to help get things rolling and keep them rolling. And, you know, when you're dealing with a lot of volunteers, and we all interact with volunteers, but, you know, somebody in the end is the person who, you know, has to do the scheduling and, keep things going. So um, thank you, uh, Heather, for really doing this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, any uh, Next, new business is here for topics. As you remember from last meeting, this is our yearly election for offices. And uh, we nominated, uh, I've been nominated for chairman. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike Hearn is nominated for vice chairman. Mm -hmm. We haven't had a candidate for secretary come forward yet. Would any of you like to volunteer for that job? Not a very arduous job, but. Okay, we just volunteer. Okay, I we just heard that. Uh, you volunteer around here. You can pick up. I found that out. Okay, uh, so therefore we uh, we need a vote. So uh, for my position, chairman of the board. One candidate, me. Aye, Sinatra. All, all of those in, in favor? Aye. All of those opposed? And uh, for Mike Hearn, Vice Chairman, all of those in favor? Aye. Aye. All of those opposed? Who is Mike? And right Catherine Pakula Service, who is Kale. just. Service. For Kayla. Okay. Kayla. Okay. Kayla. Has uh, just volunteered for a secretary. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Next President Catherine, vote for that. 
<laughs> Catherine, you are in Dubai and duly elected. All of us are duly elected. And uh, we'll see you again next year. Okay, I think that's, uh, well, as you know, uh, two of us are on the, uh, the selection committee. Uh, what would you call it? I wouldn't call it selection committee. Search committee. Search committee. Yeah. Yeah. Search committee, and we have a director from uh, uh, another COA, and we have uh, Mary Ann Labarge, because it's constant. And as everything else, of course, is confidential and can't be revealed. I you know, kind of would like a list of names of people who applied, but you don't do that. You will list the person who gets the job. And uh, in, in all search committees, you can't uh, reveal the names. But we have met once, and we have a schedule of meetings to yeah. answer the questions. So it's, the it's already ongoing. Do you have candidates? Oh, yes. Yeah, the, 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 applications. Applications. the applications have already okay. been submitted. And Can you say how many? many? Yeah. It's at the 21. 21. But we may have additional ones. Oh, so because we, uh, uh, the HR did not do the MCOA, or Massachusetts Council on Aging, website. Mm -hmm. And so last Friday, uh, I presume, uh, somebody said it was on there. Oh, yeah. So last Friday, uh, the HR got it on that website for one week. But we're going to go with the candidates we've looked at already with some selection, mm -hmm. and we'll get look at the new ones if they need to be examined. So that's statewide? Yes, yeah. Yeah. statewide. Yeah. So, so the uh, posting is until uh, June 20th for additional yeah. applications. So you have a staff yeah. schedule to be yeah. No, no, no. So when it gets down to maybe like the final three, I'm thinking that like how um, when they did different things that we saw in the Gazette, when they did them in Amherst and stuff, they, they list like the final three candidates and give all the their background and statistics. That would be up to the mayor a public or yeah. Yeah. Uh, to do that. We, we are going to get down to a final group yeah. Yeah. and then the HR is going to hand that off to the mayor. Then the mayor gets to decide. Then the mayor will yeah. interview and do whatever he we wants. Don't get to it's decide. not a public, it's not an elected yeah. position. It's a it's a it's an appointment. It's an appointment. It's an appointment. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's a city so we, they don't have to do any of that. Yeah, it's a city employee. So. And it's not a union job. Right. They don't do any of that. The mayor can just yeah. the mayor can yeah. listen to the search yeah. committee yeah. and go totally yeah. a different direction. Yeah. I think what Lorraine is talking about in the paper that in Amherst <clears> the finalists <throat> were all listed mm -hmm. with yeah. their qualifications. Yeah, and even when um, they go for a, a principal of the school, mm -hmm. you see the la the yeah. three top candidates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't they have just, to do that. They can. They yeah, have. yeah, they don't have. Do you have to be in a union position? I remember working in the state. You wow. have a union director. You have to do. You have to do any kind of um, um, interview. Have it been something? It's not a union position. It is. It's it is. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Union position and. Um, mm. But, uh, no, I never. Okay, I think they do. I think they do. But in the end, we're going to pass off uh, the number of candidates that HR feels is appropriate, and, and we will all agree on. And these will be passed to the mayor, and then he can interview, not interview, appoint whatever he wants to. So oh, you're just case. seeing people on paper. We are you basically mean, taking a large crowd and winning it down to what we feel okay. the best group. And then we hand it to the mayor and say, "This is what we, what we've got, and then it's up to him." We so yeah, just on paper. We interviewed them and we checked our records. Yeah, that was the question. Pardon? So you can ask questions. So he can come up with someone that's not in the group. Yeah. Yes, he can. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So why go to all that? The mayor has appointed us, and uh, <laughs> I don't that's know. That's a good question. It's a very good question. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, it's the mayor's appointment, and so we're doing what the mayor is yes. asking. The HR is doing what they do. Yeah. And it's the designation. Mayor. And then what the mayor does is now they're planning on uh, the assistant job will be posted and uh, decided upon by the new executive director. Mm -hmm. She, her, she or he will be in charge of that posting that and, yeah. that, and that condition. Yeah, and that does make sense. Yeah. This lengthens the job a little bit here, but uh, you know, she's that doing so well. Yeah. And uh, also the new director will be hiring the department secretary. So. That's true too, yes. Barbara's leaving in August. Her last day is June 29th. June 29th. I'm sorry, July. Oh, July. 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 Um, so the chances are that I won't be working with them in person. But um, Heather and I have been meeting, and Heather, you know, pretty much is going to know we 
where things are. And, um, I mean, I can't share everything I know with uh, Heather because it's too many years. <laughs> but, yeah. And Heather only has a notebook that has so many pages she can write it in. For him or her? For, for Heather when Oh, that's short. Yeah, Heather and and it, uh, HR and our committee has pretty much agreed that due to the timing of everything, more than likely we won't have someone by July 1st. Right. Because okay. even if we can select mm -hmm. someone by July 1st, right. um, they, they, they will have, to give, they have to give a notice of their job and everything sure. else. So That's why so long it has four jobs. We're, we're looking at <laughs> it. Yeah. 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 So, you know. It's going to be a crazy summer here, mm -hmm. so we'll really be depending on our board members and everyone some of you have gotten calls from Linda already on summer schedules, and so we're really depending on the extras. So we'll do what we can. Mm -hmm. Keep you sane and alive. Right. <laughs> so what was it, vodka or? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been great. Margaritas pitching. Okay, I think that just about covers everything we have um, today. Is there no, anything else? No, I do need volunteers for specific events and time. So we have the birthday celebration for those in 90 and up with, um, on Tuesday, June 21st. So I would be looking for the people and you know, servers and all will clean up after. Um, it starts at 11.30, so people are here between 11 and 11.15. Okay. 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 I can do that. Yeah, that's the day that I work, right? Yeah, How many do you need, Heather? Um, let's see, Sherry and Bob. I know Bonnie LaValle is going to come. I could use one more. It's 1130? Yep. So we'll be here at 1130? I can do it. I have a police meeting in the morning. I'll be doing it. Heather, we'll be here at 1130? No, a little bit before and after 11 or so. Yeah. We'll give you I'll say 11 o'clock. That should be fine. And that's for the birthday party? Mm-hmm. Right. For those 90 and older. <laughs> so we will feel like okay, youngsters so, at that yeah. at that event. <laughs> I can do that, Helen. Right. Okay. Just just kids. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the blood drive coming up. Mm -hmm. All right. So, said it, I so I do have yeah, you, yeah. and I think I have Jim. Yeah, when you do that, well, we can't do that. When is it? Yeah. When so is that's it? Wednesday, June twenty second. Oh, yeah. You could just stay over yeah. after the party. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you do with that? That's why I have my little calendar. I can't. Because you have to sign. I don't know. They don't need that many people. The blood drive. Yeah, 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 the blood drive. Okay, so the volunteers at the blood drive, one person checks people in, the other one's at the refreshment table to hand out after people donate one. Is it two? Yeah, there's two chefs. Okay. We need four and the times? It says here from 12 to 6. Yeah, so 12 to 6. At World War II. Two. Two. Or it's at World War II. It's not here? No, that's right. World War II across the street. That's what we did last time. Yeah, two chefs. I'm just curious, is World War II still using the kitchen yes, facility? Yes, yeah. And I asked um, yesterday how their kitchen's coming, and it's not. So, uh oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It probably isn't correct. Okay. So that's the second, that's the second one. Or second Thursday is the 14th. Yeah. Okay. Not that we couldn't bump it if, if it needs to be or whatever, but I'm saying right here. I just want a clarification. Yeah. Okay, so it's the 14th. 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 Yeah. Okay. okay, I didn't catch that. Mm -hmm. The concert started. Well, you didn't have to catch that. That's right. The <laughs> concert started. Not your responsibility. That's my comment. Yeah. They start the 23rd. Okay, I think uh, that just exhausts the budget to everything. The first one is the Florence Symphony. We've got a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And they do a lot of patriotic songs. You stand up and we'll And uh, all those in favor of motion to adjourn? Aye. 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 Aye
Yep. Anybody opposed? Yeah. Torture. <laughs>